may get bored with me, but this is the second talk. And uh, I'm going to talk on our trans-arterial AVM treatment with multi-plug intranidal flow control that we are doing uh, in the recent years. Uh, the intranidal onyx injection technique, the so-called prolonged repetitive reflux and push technique that we've developed since 1998, it was a different philosophy and it uh, received many criticisms at the beginning, but then it gained worldwide acceptance uh, after people uh, has uh, got the uh, training or uh, got their experience, but it is comparable to radical surgery, not like preoperative embolization, uh, palliative embolization. So the treatment targets became to cure all grade one and two AVMs by embolization alone. And we were uh, able to uh, start to treat uh, high-grade AVMs more effectively, of course, when it is indicated to treat those AVMs. For example, in such grade 3 AVMs, in our old technique, uh, the uh, starting technique, we were able to um, occlude it uh, by embolization alone. Uh, very good result, very long-term follow-up. Even with such deep AVMs, uh, we, may, uh, we could be uh, successful. Uh, it depends on the uh, um, operator's attitude, being patient and taking the responsibility. Uh, at those times, we were leaving some uh, non-detachable catheters after very long injections and um, we published the initial data uh, with uh, a 8.5% morbid mortality and uh, like uh, almost 50% complete obliteration in that particular group, the all-time experience. But then after the Aruba trial, although we uh, ourselves also criticized very much, but it also indicated the necessity to improve the endovascular te technique and make it usable with increased average quality. So there happen to be uh, other uh, improvements uh, in the AVM embolization, like transarterial with proximal occlusion, whether via so-called pressure cooker technique or via double lumen balloon occlusion or there is transvenous approach as first uh, advocated by ISFAN uh, and then uh, improved by Jacques, by uh, Charbel, uh, by René uh, and our technique, which is the multi-plug technique, which I'm going to talk on afterwards, I, I mean, at this point. So we more and more understand that uh, an effective nidus penetration is all about controlling the flow to or within the nidus to facilitate the penetration with lesser early venous migration. We occlude the vein at the end, but we do not want to occlude before, uh, uh, occlude totally the vein before we finish the nidus, or we have to make sure that the nidus is totally obliterated if we are to occlude the vein. So for that purpose, we started to do multi-plug injection. This is an ideal case for multi-plug, why? Because uh, two pedicles, one from ACA, one from MCA. So you can see both micro catheters very easily. You can appreciate very easily. Uh, it has limited venous drainage. So once you control the flow to the nidus, you can finish it, uh, finish in uh, AVM. Uh, it lessens the multi-plug technique, lessens the amount uh, refluxing on microcat as well. 
The disadvantage is you have to control multi-cats at two views simultaneously. Uh, so it's not an easy job. So it is hardly one man job. So we do it. We are lucky that we would. Huh? <laughs> so we, we do, uh, we are lucky that we are two people. Uh, so for, a, for one person controlling at least four points, sometimes up to eight points so far, it may not be an easy task. And also I have to admit that our um, assisting people are very experienced that they follow the floro with us as well. Anyway, you see the microcatheter injections, they are in the nidus and uh, very easily we can uh, achieve this result uh, and occluding the vein at the vicinity of the, at the outlet of the nidus, not sending the material all the way within the veins. So you see, uh, you can compare the onyx cast with the angio and uh, the two vein outlets, they are both taken, but not material all the way to the sinus. I mean, you don't need it. And this is the one year control on this patient. Uh, so at the beginning, we were uh, um, occluding smaller AVMs. We did this with Jivan during the WLNC uh, 2015 Chicago Live, that we put one catheter uh, in the PCA and the other one from the MCA temporal branch. And uh, we were able to finish this AVM. And uh, this is after the embo closure. And uh, this is the uh, last control at three years stable occlusion, nice result. Of course, you can say that you can finish this with one through one microcatheter or maybe through transvenous approach, but with multi-plug, it was <coughs> uh, straightforward. In this particular one, uh, this was an international <coughs> patient. Uh, it was more tricky uh, because of the location. And there is one big uh, vein, and there's also this enrosum in the nidus. And uh, so we wanted to uh, go for cure, and uh, we decided to put two microcatheters at the MCA and one from the ACA as well. Here, coming from that way. And uh, Using the four of these, uh, we can um, decide which pedicles, uh, the working projections. Uh, it makes uh, the AVM uh, more clear. Oops. Okay. Here you are. Uh, so we have three microcatheters, three Apollos, two from these two MCA pedicles, and the third one from that uh, smaller ACA pedicle to control the flow. You see all three Apollos here. And with this simultaneous injection, we were able to uh, occlude the entire AVM taking the vein, vein, the aneurysm is also occluded. And this is the control MRI on that patient showing the edema round. It is in the pre-central area, uh, the motor association, mostly uh, in the motor association area. The diffusion weighted series uh, did not show any uh, infarct. And this is, since the patient is international, he, she didn't come for the control MRI, uh, I mean control DSA, but sent this uh, MR, MR angiography, uh, and uh, she's doing fine. Another example, uh, this patient had uh, seizures, 
and had this MRI done showing this aneurysm with um, edema around. And there is that accompanying uh, small nidus. Uh, and the angiography showed the venous aneurysm uh, on the draining vein uh, and a small uh, AVM. Uh, I don't know if this could be the, a good candidate for transvenous. I'm not that experienced on that uh, approach, uh, but we decided to do this with multi uh one from PCA pedicle, the other one from uh, MCA pedicle, the temporal branch, and also we put one catheter for, to the anterior choroidal just for the purpose of controlling the uh, flow within the nidus so that we can make sure that we take the entire nidus. And uh, so this, is, this Apollo is coming from the temporal branch from the MCA. This one is coming from the anterior choroidal just to, for the purpose of controlling the flow so that there would not be a reflux to the anterior choroidal artery. And this is coming from the uh, posterior temporal uh, post, uh, PCA pedicle from the posterior circulation. And this is the end result and uh, preoperative MR, postoperative MR. And you only see, except for the thrombosed venous aneurysm, we only have that little dot of ischemic lesion uh, after the treatment. And uh, one year control MR and MR angiography on this patient. This was 2018 WLNC live case. It was Saran's case. They treated this case with Naji during the live uh, transmission, right temporal, um, medium size uh, AVM. And um, they selected the uh, pedicles that they're going to put the uh, catheters, multiple catheters. So uh, in the one with very high flow, they put the scepter, the regular scepter. The other MCA pedicle they put to Apollo and one other uh, in the PCA uh, from the posterior circulation. So three catheters at a time. and. This was the end result. This is the cast. You see, they took the entire AVM, including the venous uh, outlet, and done with the case. And this is the one year control on this patient. And this is the case that I treated during this WLNC from, uh, to Barcelona, from Ankara, with Osman helping me. We had uh, four catheters at a time. Uh, we put the uh, eclipse balloon because it was very large. That scepter may not seal uh, within that PCA pedicle. And three micro catheters in the MCA pedicles. I will show. See, this is the uh, your fluoro image. So. One person understanding and uh, keeping the track with all these microcatheters uh, is not easy for sure. So, uh, and the last one, I have to admit that we didn't give the material from that particular one from the beginning. It was for the purpose that if we ended up not sending any material to the area, to the remote area, then there will be our microcatheter ready to finish the remaining so that uh, there will not be any risk from that uh, point towards the end. This is the Onyx cast that we created with three microcatheters, uh, one, uh, one of which was the b uh, balloon cat. Um, we were able to create this cast. This was the 
last part from the fourth microcatheter at the very end to finish the remaining. And this is the end result after the treatment. And uh, this is uh, how it looked like in the control angios. And this is the post-treatment MRI edema around. And on diffusion series, there's that little uh, DVI uh, restriction of acute ischemia, possibly because of my fourth catheter, which is kind of remote that I ended up uh, occluding normal parenchyma from that particular microcatheter because it was like um, feeding the parasite uh, flow. Uh, and this is six months control on that patient, stable occlusion. Uh, and these are the control MRI. See only that little area here that I damaged uh, extra, I would say. Uh, for such grade 4 AVM, I don't think that uh, it would decrease the uh, um, success of the treatment. The patient was asymptomatic, didn't have any symptoms from that. Uh, till the beginning of 2019, so this, these numbers do not include the last year's cases. Uh, we treated 154 AVMs, two-thirds we used multi-plug. Not all of the patients with multi-plug were for cure, actually. And our complete closure rate in the second half of the experience was 64%, uh, a little bit less than 8% morbid mortality. Permanent morbidity uh, of more than MRS2 is 1.6 only. There's always a room to improve the control of the nidus uh, flow uh, during the obliteration. Uh, there came miniceptor into the market. We were able to use, we have been able to use in two cases so far. Uh, these are just for the purpose of comparison who have not had the experience for, uh, for uh, you who have not any experience with that one yet. Scepter Mini has almost the same outer um, dimensions with Apollo, uh, like 2.8 French and 1.6 French distally outer diameter, whereas the Apollo 2.7 and 1.5. And uh, the balloon length is nine millimeter. I wish it is a little bit um, shorter because taking the turns, uh, it may be much easier. It is still, it goes uh, much better than regular scepter. You see the uh, features of the scepter just to have the comparison. However, uh, it is more like uh, Apollo than like a regular scepter in terms of navigation. Uh, in this uh, post-central uh, dominant hemisphere grade 4 AVM, uh, we treated uh, with multi-plug. We used uh, two scepter mini in that particular patient. Oops. Uh, one in the uh, pericolosal pedicle and one uh, in the MCA pedicle with the high flow and the other from the MC, uh, other MCA pedicle we put Apollo and uh, we decided to put a uh, fourth one in the posterior choroidal however we couldn't catheterize with uh, regular uh, catheters and micro catheters without a balloon help and since uh, we had already uh, a lot of accesses, we didn't want to put a balloon here to, for the catheterization. So we uh, catheterized with headway duo, a uh, simple uh, um, single marker, just to uh, 
shut down the flow from that pedicle. Uh, this is it. So we did it at the very beginning, uh, uh, embolized distally, and then <coughs> did multiplug from three pedicles, two mini and the one Apollo. You see how distal it can go. Uh, it has a very, very short uh, nose, very short, almost none uh, at the floral, like two millimeter, two and a half millimeter. And <coughs> this is the end result after the treatment. And this is the control MRI with the edema, lots of edema around, uh, no uh, ischemia according to diffusion weight is serious, but only vasogenic edema. Uh, we don't have yet the <coughs> control MRI, uh, MRI because it is more recent. And uh, the patient had limp apraxia after the treatment for a few days, but left uh, the hospital intact. Uh, the last one in the recent week, uh, the grade two AVM, small AVM. We were able to put a uh, scepter mini into that pedicle from MCA. The second pedicle we put Apollo. We tried to put another mini to that PCA pedicle, but we were not able to get the mini uh, distal enough. So we used it just for the purpose of flow control the, uh, with the balloon inflation, but uh, did uh, embolization from two microcatheters at a time, one mini and one Apollo. And uh, we were able to occlude the AVM. So the conclusion, uh, endovascular treatment can be considered as treatment of choice for grade one and two AVMs if there is treatment indication. The technique, uh, the multiplug technique may decrease overall uh, complications with lesser venous migration and proximal reflux making embolization of nidus in high-grade AVMs more effective as well. The amount of liquid embolic is substantially decreased with intranidal flow control, uh, preventing the use of unnecessary amounts wasted for proximal reflux and venous migration. So thank you for your attention. Um, any questions, comments? Mm. Vasogenic edema. Do you think that's truly vasogenic edema, or maybe you're getting a component of a vein? Because uh, that resembles venous. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we got the uh, outlet of the vein, and that vein may be draining, draining some normal, normal brain. parenchyma as well. But it causes vasogenic edema by definition, the venous occlusion. But it appears as vasogenic edema in terms of imaging properties. But I don't know the reason of the vasogenic edema. Arteria or vein? Hmm? Arteria or vein? Uh, vasogenic. <laughs> Well, uh, well uh, it is hard to differentiate whether it is because we closed down, shut down the AVM. I don't know. I don't know the answer. But the venous occlusion also causes vasogenic edema. The imaging properties are those of vasogenic edema. That I can say.